Mike, the, obviously the boys put up a fight in the first half, but you know, from your perspective, are they they look short of, of talent and direction? They look behind the curve, even um, against Scotland in that in that game. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of balls down and sort of mistiming and launch attacks and uh, people all were running each other and it was just sort of um, a bit, yeah, a bit sort of, yeah, obviously Gata said they're in a hole and I, and I do think, yeah, they are really. And I think it's almost, I think we've got to really look, not even look to the next World Cup, we've got to look to the World Cup after it. And I think we've got to, you know, really sort of change change things up, put youngsters in there. I never been one to just you know people say oh let's chuck the youngsters in well that's not the case that's not how you develop youngsters you've got to have some you um experience in there but I think we're at the stage where there's such a big gap between the older players and the younger ones I think I think we really we're at that stage where we've got to say okay this six nations gone and I you know I don't I don't even think we'll do much in the World Cup so let's really give blood as many youngsters as possible give them that experience. Let's not put any pressure on them, like what France did uh, with Dupont sort of under twenties era, and and say, look, we're going to target, you know, the World Cup after next, and you know, give these boys time because you know the, the boys, um, you know, there is talent there. Um, you know, Hawkins in the centre, he's got he, he's he's got class about him. Put some lovely balls in, great footwork, looks powerful. Um, you know, so. Yeah, I just think it's a time now where we've got to look look for the future. I mean, you know, even with our best side, does that mean are we going to compete in the next World Cup? Probably not. You know, so what are we trying to do? You know, let's really look look to the future and and give these boys the best best opportunity. So, what does he do then? Just blood young players at this World Cup, like sticking all those youngsters at the World Cup, or does he go there and play yeah, his we... older players and try and go with the Tippericks, the Falatals, the Win Joneses, or does he just go, right, throw the youngsters in, see how they go, and that's a learning experience for four years' time. Is that how he keeps his job? He signed a mega deal, hasn't he? But I, I, I just, you know, I think there's some of the bigger names there. You know, what you know, what are we trying to get out of this? I mean, I think, you know, there's... We've got to look for the future, and I think, you know, some of the players, the bigger names, they're not seem to be performing. They've been there for, for so long. They've been amazing for Wales. They've got 100-odd caps. I mean, there's only so much your body can do and every player's got a shelf life, you know, and that's just it. You know, it's your body can only give so much. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sad day to move on, but it's something that has to happen and you've got to give the youngsters the best opportunity as well, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would just, you know, obviously you keep the odd senior player, but I think you really load it with a load of youngsters. Yeah, it's true when you say it, you think about it, like even with the captaincy choice with Ken Owens, like is he gonna yeah. is he gonna play every game? I like love the man, old sheriff, but is he yeah. gonna play every game leading up to the World Cup? Is he gonna be, you know, in there for every match? Yeah, that's for me a little bit of a strange decision. Yeah, Ken is the nicest bloke on the planet. I mean, he's the best for a great bloke. Yeah. But yeah, he's thirty six years of age, so and he's been out, he's been playing so well, you know. He, he's been really good, and uh, you know he's from part of the world where I'm from. He's you know the best bloke. Um, but yeah, you know, is he going to be there constantly every training session? I, yeah, you know, there's question marks over that. So yeah, he should have been given the captaincy four years earlier. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. It's just it seems, yeah, as Gats put himself, I think we're in a bit of a hole. And, um, you know, it's going to be a tough game now against England, and then I think it's Italy away, so it's uh, it's it's going to be tough. Mike, I know <clears throat> Gats was an incredible uh, coach for you uh, and Wales in general, um, but I th Let's, think can we rephrase was, that? Was... I was a good player for him. No, of no. course. Oh, um, no. <laughs> what I meant to say is, Mike, I know that Gats was incredibly lucky to have you as a player yeah, um, exactly. throughout his Wales and Lions tenure. Um, but he, he's, I think, lost 12 of his last 14 matches as head coach of three uh, different sides in the Chiefs, uh, Wales and the Lions. Um, do you think with that squad, even he is out of his depth? I cut you cut out a little bit there what you're saying, but yeah, he's got he, he's gone down to New Zealand. He has he's barely won a game, you know. Um, 
you know, why why is he taking this role? Because I think he had he had the perfect story as Welsh coach. He came in with a grand slam, he left with a grand slam, he had a grand slam in the middle. People love him. Um <clears throat> you know, that was like the perfect ending. So it just seems, you know, what is what's his why to come back and coach? Is it purely for money or you know, what's what's the reason? Is it because he had, you know, a bit of um you know, perhaps not the success he wanted down in New Zealand or, you know, and he seems to be li- listening to his, his, you know, after match and pre-match. He seems like a different person because when we employed him in 2008, he was undoubtedly, you know, one of the best in the world, if not the best. You know, he was, he was hurting from being sacked from Ireland. He had his success from uh, Wasps. You know, we had him at the perfect time and he came in at the perfect time. You know, he's a, he's obviously he's been through a lot now, and he's a different kind of guy. And I I thought he'd be a lot more um, annoyed in his press conferences, and and you know as he was at the start. But clearly, he's a different person now. And what you know, we've been almost employed a different coach. You know, who's been through been through it all. So you know, um, you know, I want to see a bit of edge from him. I want to see players being called out, and because the performances you know aren't good enough, and um, you know, uh, hopefully he can turn things around. But you know, I think he needs to get back to the the old nitty and gritty and sort of you know get a bit of bark there. Really, well, he was never afraid of culling the older generation. No, um, so as you found out yourself. But do, do you think it's it's time for a complete clear out of 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 the older lads? Yeah, I think I, like I said, I think so because you know there's no other way to go really, and I think. Um, you know, like I said, your body can only give so much. And I think, you know, these older guys, you know, they know every time they're stepping onto that field, they, they, they're making history. And, um, you know, we all want to play for Wales. We all want to play for our, um, our countries. And But what's best for, for the actual jersey moving forward, really? And, you know, you know it, it's tough, but these, these decisions have to be made. And, you know, the next generation have to be given the best opportunity as well. There are suggestions that uh, Sean Edwards and Rob Howley were the real keys to Wales' success in that period that you were part of, and that uh, Gats, like Clive Woodward, was more the face, uh, and that actually, without those coaches, he and his teams were, were a bit lost. What, what would you say to that? You know, Gats had a lot of biscuits and coffee to go through on the side of the pitch. I mean, I mean, it's tough to, you know... You know who's going to eat all those biscuits? I mean, um, yeah, I think to be to credit to to Gats, though, I mean, you know, he picked, he assembled like a team around him, and you know, he picked the very best. So, um, you know, he was very much obviously the the, the, the spokesman, and you know, fronted everything, and um, but beneath him had you know we had world class coaches in, in Sean and. Uh, and Rob was fantastic as well. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it was all, it's a team effort, isn't it? And I think everyone played their part and, um, you know, G- Gats was the front of it all as well. And, you know, he delivered his, and the way he was, the way he kind of interacted with the players and little sly digs and trying to sort of, you know, um, play his little mind games. Uh, and, you know, it, it worked well. Um so, but yeah, it's very much a team effort when you're in that environment and, and everyone was, you know, you look at Sean, Sean was a massive part of it. Um, not only on the field, but off the field, the way he, he just interacted with the players and, you know, he all everyone's always on edge around him. Um, I loved him, I always got on with, well with him, but, you know, he was a massive part of it and nobody ever wanted to leave him down. And I think, um, you, you know, look at the French defence, they just... You know, from the kickoff, they're flying off that, off that line, and they're all fighting for him. Which is, um, and it's p- purely because of him as a bloke as well. He's a, just a top top bloke. You know, it's, um, you know, you fight for good people, and you know, it's not so much as a player. I, I never really sort of listened too much about what they were trying to coach, but it was more about is the person standing in front of me a good bloke, and that's who you you want to fight for, and not you know let down really, and. Um, so yeah, you know, it was, you know, we had a good team there, and and yeah, Sean was a massive part of it. Rob was obviously part of it as well, and it was a, a good mix and a good blend of of those three coming together really. And um, 
you know, who was who was the best. I don't know. I mean, who was more important? I think it's irrelevant, really. It's when you put them all together, everyone sort of um, married well. Was Gatlin that hands on? Was he very hands on, or was he would he sit back and let the others sort of run the show? Yeah, not really hands on. I wouldn't say. Um, and the bigger the contracts he had, the more he went. <laughs> <laughs> The more, we relaxed, the more coffee drunk and more biscuits he had. But um yeah, no, I mean I think um not yet a team around him, obviously you had your forwards coach, backs coach, or everything. So yeah, but he was very much but he, you know, you gotta give him credit because he assembled everyone and you know, he you know, you know, he got his team around him and that's what it's about. And he came in then with his little um bits of information and his little, you know, take on things and um which he did very, very well, you know, and, and he, he so he, he pushed the buttons of players and, um, you know, he did a great job. What, what do you make of this team at the moment, Mike? You know, is it one of the worst Wales teams that you've ever witnessed in your lifetime? <laughs> uh, oh, it's I mean, it's it's mad, isn't it? I mean, the, the <laughs> year of Welsh rugby, they go down to South Africa, they beat South Africa first time, uh, Wales have ever achieved that. I mean, it's phenomenal, and that was only last summer. Uh, but then you know, lose to Georgia at home. I get sorry, going back to last Six Nations, losing Italy at home. So it, I mean, I mean, a roller coaster uh, of a sort of a year. And it's um, as the boys know, any game of rugby is fine margins, and um, you know, I guess internationally, those margins are even finer and. You know, little things can can change games, but um, so you know, they they are not going to be a million miles away. I think England come into town. I think it's probably the best team they could play now. I think they weren't really impressive in the second half against Italy, so it's probably a great time to play England and play on that sort of, you know, the history of Wales England, and you know, try and just get get a victory somehow. And I think then you know, you've got Italy away, which a team which Wales know they can beat, and. <laughs> Yeah, but also, <laughs> also but exactly. also, get kid lose to. I, do you know what? I, yeah. I think I reckon I reckon Wales beat England next next week and then end up losing to Italy. I think it's going to be something crazy like that. That's that does sound quite classical. Actually, I can see that also occurring. Well, they could lose. They could lose all the games. I mean, you know. Well, they, yeah, they is, that your, is that your prediction, Mike? Do you think they uh, can yeah, actually... well, Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Like, like they, they, they're in a tough old place at the moment. And they could they could be coming out of their Six Nations realistically with the old wooden spoon. Yeah. They, they yeah could. Guys, stop hypothesizing. Curd Bruce? word. Yeah. What do you Bruce think? you won something then, though. Mike. <laughs> 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 Yay. Bruce, you won something. Do you, reckon, do you reckon there's a chance of that? Wales with a wooden spoon? Yeah, there's, yeah, there is a chance, yeah. Next week's going to be interesting, isn't it? I mean, Scotland beat France, Wales beat England. Well, let, hold on, let's get on to, let's get into England, England-Italy, Max. 